Thank you so much for uh, everyone for joining again. So today, as I said, we're going to talk about how you can find your Polish ancestry records through regional archives in Poland. Just a bit of housekeeping before we start, uh, just to remind you all that there's a chat box uh, where you can send all any any comments, any questions that you have. We'll do our very best to answer your questions. If we don't have time, because this is web, this webinar is only half an hour, yeah. please um, remember that you can always get in touch with us. We're gonna take notes of all of your questions and try to get back to you by email or social media. But we're gonna share our email address towards the end if you want to have more information and um, and if you want to send uh, questions to our panel today. Uh, this webinar is being recorded. So we're gonna send an email to you afterwards with the recording if you want to rewatch it. And also there's gonna be some links uh, from our regional archives that you can um, access to. So don't worry if you don't have time to take notes uh, today. Thank you. So before uh, we start with the topic of today, I wanted to introduce our wonderful uh, presenter. Uh, this is Rafael. Rafael is a Polar and Senior Researcher, and he has a master's degree in history from the University of Warsaw. He has plenty of experience working with um, state archives and with the Institute of National Remembrance, the state archives in Warsaw, and the central archives of the modern records. I also want to welcome Eva. Eva is a wonderful director and founder of Poland, and she's a recognized leader in the fields of translating European citizenship. Many of you might know her on uh, from our social media. Also, have, many of you have met her already on Zoom or, or in person. She regularly presents and lectures at conferences, universities, and training institutions on the topic of languages, services, language services, cultural awareness and history. And uh, without overdue, uh, I want to pass it on to Eva. Thank you. Thanks, Hibs. Uh, thank you for that introduction, Andrea, and welcome, everyone. Um, again, we had, um, I think, over 110 people registered, so this is great um, to see that the webinar series, which will continue, um, garners so much interest. So I've just come back from Poland, by the way, where for the first time I met Rafael and everybody else in the team, because as you can probably imagine over the last three years, um, you know, given that I live in Australia, I couldn't really travel. So that was amazing. And um, in September, uh, Rafa and I attended a very interesting um, conference at the archive. So he uh, is a fountain of knowledge, let me tell you. Um, today's webinar is going to be short, as Andrea said. Um, so with all the introductions, we're going to have about 25 minutes. But what I wanted to say is please don't hesitate. If there's any way we can help you um, research your own family history, get in contact with us. Um, what uh, we're going to do today is focus on regional archives. Um, at the last webinar, we showed you where you can find records um, that are um, you know, countrywide. But often people say to us, oh, my family comes from such and such. Where do I find this information? So I'm going to hang out, hand over to Rafael now um, to explain um, to us where those archives are and a little bit more about um, how you can uh, find your own information uh, about your own family. Over to you, Rafael. Thank you, Eva. Thank you, Andrea, also for this invitation. Hello, everyone. As usual, I'd like uh, uh, I'd love to have more time to tell uh, every aspects about the research uh, in the state archives in Poland. Of course, I do my best to look at the timeline and uh, to present everything today. I want to share with you about the as uh, about these aspects. So, as you remember uh, in uh, my previous uh, webinar, I was talking about the state archives and its structure. In this map, you see exactly uh, how the state archives in Poland are located. Just remember, you this was a free central uh, archives located in Warsaw. 
30 uh, regional state archives uh, with their 78 branches so the maps shows you exactly the places uh, remember also that uh, when i was talking about the tutor affiliation um, uh, uh, and the records who were created um, uh, in our history uh, according to this uh, they should be preserved in the nearest state archive so for example if you're looking for any documents of i uh, your ancestors who lived once, for example, in Poznan, just the first steps, you should go to the nearest state archive and not exactly maybe to send the, uh, to the other uh, institutions. Okay, so um, uh, the, all the documents you can find in the state archives have a very important, um, uh, they're very important for the Polish history and uh, they're protected by the Polish regula regulations. Uh, in the state archives, mostly you can find the original records, uh, various types of the manuscripts, printing records, maps, audio, video records, uh, and the other historical sources created by both institutions and the natural persons. According to the last survey, uh, we know that in the state archives we have over three, 43 million archival units and definitely it's not uh, the end more more records are moving to the state archives as well uh, but the question usually is for us and especially for the people who are just starting uh, get the, 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 uh, you're interested in this uh, research in the polish archives is what are type of sources we can find uh, to get any information about these families. This is exactly I'm here for you to share with you my knowledge. Today, I want to present you the most, in my opinion, popular records we can find in the state archives. However, of course, I'm not able to tell you about everything. Most popular means that the most common sources and they are the most useful sources we have okay if uh, and uh, today of course we are uh, trying to focus only on the state archives in Poland however if there be anything uh, uh, other type of the records maybe like metrical books which usually are preserved in the church or archives of course I will uh, mention this information starting from the vital records uh, the vital records how old the uh, vital records could be usually starting from the end of the 18th century when they have been entered into the time of the partition of um, uh, Poland. And uh, this type of the documents, they are very common, very useful by every type of the researchers. Mostly they can be found in the state archives. Uh, of course, if they haven't been destroyed, for example, in the First or Second War War. Uh, also, uh, it's important to remember that the unitary registration of the vital records in Poland uh, have been entered uh, after Second World War and the newly uh, uh, public registry offices uh, were responsible to keep vital records for 100 years if we're talking about the birth certificates and 80 years for the marriage and the death certificates before uh, moving them to the state archives. And the very similar documents, uh, very similar uh, archival records are metrical books. Uh, they, uh, usually they contain the same information like the vital records. However, they could be older as uh, mostly they are preserved in the church archives, but sometimes we can expect to find them also in the state archives. And from my perspective or my research projects, uh, mostly in the region of the former Prussia, some of the regions like uh, Varmia, Mazuri, Kuyavsko, Pomorskie, Wielkopolska, or Pomerania. And, uh, usually, if we are looking for metrical books, which the oldest of them could be dated to the end of the 16th, beginning of the 17th century, this is exactly um, uh, there. Exactly. Uh, so Rafael, I have a quick question place. here for you, if, if no, you don't mind. So so, sorry, yes. Rafael. So what I was going to say, and, and thank you for sharing that with us, uh, I think it would be really useful for people that are watching to familiarize themselves with the history of Poland and map of Poland to know exactly um, where people are from and what happened historically, um, because Poland was partitioned, of course, for over a century. So where the archives um, have the records um, today may depend really on, on where on the map um, um, you know, in the sort of global context of European history, things were, uh, but also what period of time, right? 
Yes, it also caused a problem of migration of the records. And this is exactly what we do. It's finding a place where we have to uh, conduct this research. Uh, sometimes even in some of the regions, which is a uh, part of an interest, uh, may have uh, most of the records we believe, but a single unit could be found even in a foreign archives, like in Germany, for example. Why the records were migrated to these archives Sometimes it's difficult to say. You know, this is uh, still a subject of the uh, of the of the uh, research. Uh, it's good to know on, uh, that uh, we have some of the tools to track those records. Uh, just uh, maybe, Andrea, could you uh, show us the previous file? Because still, this is a census files I need to present you as they're the one of the most important records, a part of the vital records or metrical books, which could be very so we useful. Wanna, we we want to go back to this slide before that Andrea but yes, what, yes. what I also wanted to ask you uh, Rafael is about the um, area of Poland um, that after 1945 was annexed to USSR and we know for a fact that a lot of records from those areas that I think a lot of our clients and listeners today uh, families come mm -hmm. from those areas so they were all taken to Russia right and to access them is, is nearly impossible right now yeah mm -hmm. Yes, unfortunately, unfortunately, but uh, at this moment, <laughs> absolutely, but it used to be also in the past. Yes, so, yes, they're very protective, uh, the Russians, are, I guess, uh, but we yes. know, uh, we, we even have witnesses, like people that are still alive that remember things being packed on trucks and um, you know, paperwork being taken to Russia. But okay, so yes. we're talking about census records now. Sense, yeah, census records, because uh, talking about the census records, we have to uh, name some of uh, the various uh, types of the census, as the census in Poland also started um, uh, with the end of the 18th century, in uh, exactly 1791, the first census is uh, noticed. Then in 1808, in 1810, it was a uh, census in the Warsaw Duchy in uh, uh, all Russian Empire in 1897, which means also it was in the, this part uh, of Poland controlled by the uh, Russian Empire at that time. Uh, in the independent, independent Poland, for example, the first census was in 1921, and then it was repeated in 19. 31. And uh, for the census, we can, uh, uh, some types of the historical records can be classified as a census records. The most popular, for example, and one of the most useful sources are the population books or the books of the residents. And also depending on the, uh, because they're mostly a 19th and 20th century sources, depending on the region of Poland. In the former Russian Empire, they start to create this type of the sources since 1861. However, they could be separated for the books of the permanent residents, but also a non-permanent resident. In the former of, uh, in the area of the former Prussia, however, they didn't have a book of residents. Instead of them, there were something like we call Selen's list, which means the list of souls. Also, uh, they contain the gener uh, information about the people who were registered from this area. The worst area, in fact, about these records is the former Austrian Hungarian Empire. It's depending on the, the single units, uh, I mean, of course, the archival sources who were created in the time when the few uh, census happened uh, in this in that country, starting from 1857 uh, to 1869, 1880, 1890, 1900-1910. Uh, 10. Uh, but um, uh, other type of the census records uh, worth to be mentioned, they could be, for example, uh, taxing records, but they refer mostly to the uh, time of the old Poland, where we can find a number of the uh, list of the residents, mostly of the people of the noble origin, and the type of the records were created usually in the time of the tax collection. Uh, they could be found in many of the original archives, um, uh, sometimes in the separated collections, sometimes they could be a part of the court files or the city's records. The problem with the, all uh, that type of the documents is that they were usually written in a Latin, but a Polish Latin, very difficult even for experienced researcher. It, good news is that some of them uh, found their, um, 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 a copies in um, uh, 
in a printed book. So easy to read, but still needs to be translated. As I said, it's not very um, easy. Visitators books also, this, uh, we call them książki meldunkowe, a typical source for 19, but mostly for the 20th century, also bring can bring you a lot of information about the names of the residents, their addresses, uh, lists of their families, but also professions of the uh, of those people, uh, their occupation, um, uh, so their occupation, their uh, confession, uh, the, um, uh, sometimes information whenever they uh, left town or commune and uh, others. Uh, so a question, Rafa, here. So given that Poland was partitioned um, until 1918, were these records um, kept by the oppressors, so by the Russians and Prussians, for example, in Austro-Hungarian Empire, or was there some sort of a local um, government, I guess, uh, that kept those records? Because you mentioned Latin Poly, so I'm interested in, uh, mm -hmm. in learning more about it's that. You, you know, you know, Eva, it's uh, I, uh, it's not an uh, one uh, is answer because also it's depending on the region and what happened with the archives is different. For example, popular uh, uh, book of residence from the Russian Empire, which was a common source, and usually they were gathered uh, in the local archives, the local archives of the of the local authorities when uh, <laughs> Russian. Strader evacuation in 1914-1915 from Poland, they took their books, the archives with them. After the Treaty of Riga, uh, many of the archival sources were recovered by the Polish archives again and they're in Poland and following, of course, the uh, uh, archivistic rules. They could be located in uh, uh, in the various types of the um, uh, fonts and collections, okay? Uh, but could, this is different, for example, in a, a little different in Prussia. For, uh, my experience mostly is connected, to, of course, with the area of the former Russian um, uh, Empire of Prussia, uh, but uh, rules could be a little different in the same a place where the records uh, might have been. We'll have uh, to move on, but in other words, what we are saying really is that there's no website that you can type in your information yes, and it'll magically pop out. It requires of, of course, historical of knowledge and, 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 and a bit of uh, inquisitive mind and patience, yeah? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, to others, uh, I wanted to tell you about the sense also. Uh, sometimes it's worth uh, for looking forms. Homes were a special um, uh, type of the records which have been filled uh, uh, when, um, uh, during time when the census was prepared or if, uh, for example, people requested uh, for um, uh, identity cards or the passports. Sometimes even in the forms, we can uh, with the forms, with the files, we can find original documents who is given by the owners of these documents when they requested for a new personal document. And the last one is that you've seen properly the photo on the previous slide with my great grandmother. This is, um, uh, this is uh, from the survey of her when she requested for uh, a new ID. Uh, the surveys were from, um, uh, from 1952 to 1997. They were gathered in a huge archival collection called the Central Registry of Identi uh, Identity Cards imprints, and they could be found only in one archive, in the State Archive on Warsaw, in the branch of uh, Milanovic. This is over one million surveys with the personal data of those people, but they could be given only on the request of these people who have uh, who are directly connected with these people, so for, for with these um, uh, with these persons, so sons, grandsons, grand grandsons, but maybe not exactly for the cousins people, because this is a uh, this is a limit access to them uh, due, of course, to the um, uh, to the information inside of uh, them. Um, court records. Also, we can divide them into various types of the documents, starting from the old Poland uh, judicial books. Uh, they could be uh, mostly, all, uh, of course, they could be useful for those ancestors who had a noble origin, but in fact, not only because even for the villages, also judicial books were created and somehow the, um, uh, a lot of them, it's, it's amazing, but a lot of them, even from the small regions, uh, they could be found in the state archives up to 
this day. What type of the information we can find from the uh, old Poland judicial books? Testimonies, receipts, uh, information about successions, um, uh, and of course, uh, everything which is uh, interested with the property of these people. Uh, it was continued also in 19th century in the court files, which still we can find both uh, civil cases and the criminal cases. Uh, the information, the mo most important most or maybe most interesting for the researchers are uh, um, the subjects like uh, um, uh, name changings uh, also testimony successions uh, but also maybe uh, declarations uh, about the person uh, persons uh, dead uh, and one of the ma uh, the last one one of my favorite um, court record sources are all type of the records of the properties including the mortgage books and notarial deeds mostly also they uh, we're starting uh, making this uh, we're starting to make this research uh, from the 19th century uh mortgage books exactly from 1820 also first half 19th century notarial deeds at the same time uh we are able to find not only information about the properties but also more individual aspects um, uh, of these documents like for example premarital agreements uh, or so. Uh, and the last type of the documents, uh, I think that's worth to mention are uh, various types of the personal files. It's for all of the people who somehow they were important, members of the political parties, uh, institutions, employers, artists or sportsmen, they could leave their own heritage uh, in the papers uh, making uh, in, in papers, um, uh, which they are now also in the uh, state archives in all Poland. So if we even uh, if we heard uh, heard uh, once about the history of one of the person we are looking for, that's what uh, remember that some of the personal files also could be preserved in the state archives. Of course, uh, if they are in the state archive, it means they can't be destroyed, they can't be sold, they should be there forever. So I think now we can uh, tell you a little about uh, the methods, how we can track your family records by uh, visiting the state archives. As you remember my previous uh, webinar, I told you that the access to the records is free of charge whenever we visit the state archive and the lecture room we can ask for them usually we can do, do this the same day however from my practice uh worth to say that if we do this one or two day before then we can be sure that we uh, could get the uh, ordered records at the same hour we requested but what so that's if, if you go to don't the have room in, yes, in person Rafael, yeah so um I, we're talking about people visiting the archives in person at the yes. reading room yeah yeah okay yes Thank if you. we are if if we are willing to do this personally or absolutely absolutely it's uh it's possible but what mm -hmm. if we Candid access, of course, nobody can find enough time, not only to Poland, but... And some people live far, yes. Yes, of course, I encourage all of you to do this because it's not only, uh, you know, a great adventure, but it could be very challenging for you, but it brings a lot of joy and satisfaction if you can find person find something. If not, then of course, that first the nationwide database uh, search in archives.gov.pl so this government database which contains not only the full evidence of the polish state archives but has also millions of scans or digital or digital forms of the records we can find in the state archives uh mostly vital records but not only sometimes uh, a very precious collection starting from the uh medieval poland up to modern times uh this database is also very important as uh, even for the experienced researchers especially for those people who once uh, were looking for their uh, ancestors by searching the old databases like LR or project there were a typical uh, evidence lists uh, which they are not uh, in use now 
but all the information from these old databases were incorporated into the search in archives. So as I say, this nationwide database, uh, very, very useful. And uh, uh, navigating in this database is, doesn't seem to be very, very complicated. But that was, uh, that database is operated, uh, was operated uh, uh, by the state archives. However, we can find a uh, number of the other databases or browsers uh, operated by the um, uh, genealogical associations or private institutions or even private persons, which could be very useful in our, for our research, just to share information about, in my opinion, one of the most important because important because they have millions also of the digital digital forms of the records and of uh, very often uh, they uh, we can use them also uh, as a browser browser for uh, searching uh, a particular names the first one metric genealogy pl is also a national database as you see they contains the records and the names if you uh, check the options from almost every polish province from every Polish region, but also from some of the countries abroad, like Lithuania, Ukraine, or Belarus. Maybe not so huge like, like a family search, but still, of course, very important. The second one, a lot of people don't know about the uh, existing of this site, but it's very important because Metric Genbaza PL contains uh, over 9 million records, vital records mostly, from 15 states archive, the bigger states archive like Łódź, Koszalin, but also smaller branches like Grodzis, Mazowiecki or Szczecinek. It's also very easy to use them and at the moment no need to create your own uh, account, just only check the folder Genbaza, you will find the uh, numbers of the archives and by clicking, uh, clicking every archive we can find number of the archival collections with their full names and their individual numbers and then of course through the archival units or years we can easily can find uh, a proper records uh, from uh, every year for example if we're talking about the vital records uh, the next one is um uh, could you and um, uh, put the next screen Okay, uh, Genealogia of Archiva is one of the service uh, which is operated by the state archive and this uh, state archive, two state archives, in fact, from Torun and Bydgosz. And it was opened a few years uh, ago uh, from the original project, uh, which was also supported by the uh, outside institutions. Uh, this database uh, has over 1.8 million scans but also a huge name index, not only vital records can be find, uh, could be found in this database, but also, for example, the visitors books from the region of Kuyavsko uh, Pomorskie. Uh, so it's a more regional, but uh, uh, it's very professional database and also easy to learn how to use it and the last one um, uh, from this huge databases i want to show you is especially for the people whose uh, ancestors lived once in a uh, former uh, eastern part of the poland which now is uh, in ukraine why not only ukraine and not belarus is because um, the records we can find if in the websites of the central archives of the historical records are from the areas of the current ukraine but the records once uh, belonged to the polish institution polish churches of the various uh, confessions these records from the areas of Lviv, Tarnopol, uh, uh, and Sunny others. Swavl, yep. <laughs> yes, were transferred uh, by the agreement between the Polish chemistry government and the Ukrainian Soviet Republic uh, to the Polish archives, first to the public registry offices and then to the archives uh, in the middle of 50s. So uh, most of the records now are uh, exactly in this archive and uh, they have uh, also digital forms. Um, uh, it's I don't think it's also 
it's not complicated to find a proper record, of course, if exists. But this is a too important note for this. First of all, this is what I said before, if the records uh, like birth certificates uh, don't have 100 years, they should be, uh, then don't uh, look into this uh, archive, you should go uh, to the public registry. This is one, a very special public registry office in Warsaw for exactly this type of the records, uh, who also is preparing the records before transferring them uh, to the historical archive, but also some of these records from the same regions, some from of the same uh, confession could be found in the historical Ukrainian archives. And why we don't have the records from Belarus? That will be also a topic I would like to uh, continue in one of our next webinar about when we'll be talking about the foreign archives and what to do if we don't have the records in the Polish archives, but we didn't have the same agreement with the uh, Belarus yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. ones. So that's, we can. That's why, yeah. Well, Rafa, guess what? Um, as usual, we've run out of time. Uh, but um, I am always amazed at the level of knowledge um, and detail that you can provide. Um, so what we will encourage people to do is just email us. We will send everybody a um, copy of this presentation. And we're particularly interested in hearing what you might want us to cover. This, um, As I said, these webinars have been um, quite successful in that um, uh, Rafa has been able to share his extensive knowledge uh, and we try and deliver it in a way that's practical. So next time we might do a, a few case studies so that people can, um, you know, see how it's done. Um, and um, I think in summary, I just wanted to thank um, Rafa. Of course, it's quite late in Poland, so we're going to let him go to, to bed. And here in Australia, it's only the beginning of the day. So that's OK. That's how we that's how we roll. Um, but what I wanted to say is that um, if you do have any questions or you want any assistance, we're more than happy to help. Sometimes communication with the archives in Poland is a bit tricky because of language barriers and all of that. We, we're more than happy to assist. So, uh, Rafael, on this note, uh, thank you so much um, again for thank sharing you your knowledge either. and expertise. And we'll see you next month, I think, or whenever the next webinar is. Thanks, everyone.